Hey. Hello. Okay. So I'm going to talk today about what I think are some of the key things that it takes to succeed in a PhD in sociology program. I pretend that I'm lost in thought while I sneak a look out of the corner of my eye. Number one most important strength that I think you need to have or a desire is writing. Writing is your bread and butter in sociology and the majority of academia. This is because you need to write essays, grant applications, applications in general, you write articles, and eventually you need to write a dissertation. Writing is going to get you through every single course. Whereas in undergrad, a lot of your sociology classes may have been based around discussion, doing lots of group activities at the graduate level. In my experience, almost everything is about reading, synthesizing, and writing your ideas out. Having a strong voice, having something to say beyond, I agree with the author about this, I disagree about this. You have to be able to critique them in very specific ways, put authors and scholars in conversation with one another, and then also posit your own ideas and notions about what you think they should be saying. So for instance, in college, you might have read Eduardo Bonilla Silva, you know, Racism Without Racist, one of his greatest books, and written. Eduardo Bonilla Silva is an amazing author. I loved his book, Racism Without Racist, because he highlights the ways in which colorblind racism is actually something that is very powerful in America and prevents people from seeing that we need to acknowledge it first within ourselves before we can actually resolve this issue. But in graduate school, you might have to write something like, Eduardo Bonilla Silva is a wonderful scholar who has contributed greatly to critical theory around racial inequality. However, he left out certain ideas and notions about racial inequality in the following ways. So as you can see, it isn't just about saying what you like or dislike. You really have to make strong arguments about what the scholar has written um, using specific detailed examples, and that is huge. So getting used to writing, loving the practice of writing, and acknowledging that it takes a lot of hard work. Now, if you're saying to yourself, I'm a terrible writer, I'll never be able to succeed, stop right there. Academic writing is, is not easy, and I don't think it's intuitive for most people. For me, I really struggled a lot when I first got to graduate school because I didn't understand how to make my writing more in line with this kind of almost mechanical way of laying out an argument or deconstructing an argument. But all it takes is practice. And once you have more confidence in your ability to write, you then can start reinserting your own specific writer's toolbox and the things that make you unique. So definitely don't take that as a reason to not apply it, but it is a skill that you need to be able to embrace. And you also might need to make a writing schedule. So writing regularly, that's going to make it a lot easier to finish your master's, to finish your comprehensive exams, and of course, to finish your dissertation. The second thing that it really takes to succeed is reading a lot. You're going to have to read constantly. I'm talking a book or more per week per class. Obviously, we only have 24 hours in a day and we spend hopefully about eight of those hours sleeping and then other things. You have to have a balance between school and other parts of your life. So you're not gonna be able to just sit there and read and literally if you did sit there and read every single book and every single article word for word, you wouldn't have time to do it. So of course, there are the graduate ways of learning to get around having to do all of the reading, specifically reading the introduction, the conclusion, the first chapter, and then parts of the chapters in between whatever is most um, related to the question that you're interested in. So <clears throat> you can find ways to get around it, but you're going to have to read a lot. If reading a lot is something that really turns you off, you might want to reconsider the reasons you're interested in having a PhD in sociology because you're going to have to read a lot. The third thing I would say is obviously research. That might sound like, duh, that's totally obvious, but honestly, 
it takes a great deal of work to create, to devise and carry out, and then analyze and write up independent research projects. So for my own work, I'm interested in qualitative. So for my master's degree, I did an ethnographic study and I interviewed people and I also did participant observation. This takes a lot of work, beginning from the literature review, which is reading and writing previous works, who, people who have done um, research similar to the area you're interested in, and then doing your own stuff and you know going back and rereading transcripts of interviews, transcribing interviews, adding more in, reading new literature, reading new books, talking to people. There's so much work involved in it. It isn't the same as just writing one um, term paper or doing one really in-depth essay. It takes a lot of work. Now for those of you who may have done a thesis at the undergraduate level, you might already be conscious of this, um, and, but there also might be more specificity in what's required of you at the graduate level. So just be conscious that it's lots of research and you might, you're might you going to spend inevitably a lot of time by yourself thinking about these things, be it carrying out your research or even if you want to do a quantitative study, figuring out your models and all that kind of stuff. It takes a lot of introspection and a lot of independent action and research to get it done. So just be conscious of that. The, the fourth thing that it really takes to succeed in a PhD program is teaching. Now, this is my program. I'm not sure that there is a sociology PhD program in which you don't have to do some form of teaching, be it TAing or maybe even instructing your own courses, but you have to teach. That means you need to at some point feel comfortable standing in front of a group of undergraduates and expressing ideas to them, working with them, mentoring them, responding to their emails, grading their papers, and working with a professor. You're going to have to work on your public speaking skills and your confidence in reading and teaching material. And for some people that comes easier and for some people it's harder because they don't really want to teach, they just want to do research. But for the most part, you're going to have to do some form of teaching. So just be conscious of that. Now, this list is by no means, it's not exhaustive, it's not definitive, it's not authoritative. It's my own experience and things that I wish I knew prior to applying because it also will change the ways in which you figure out what program you think is best for you. So, you know, location, the school itself, its reputation, its department culture, um, the stage of life that you're in, funding. All of this is highly, highly relevant and it's all going to figure into how you decide where and if you want to apply. But the first step, I think, is understanding that writing, reading, research, and teaching are the cornerstones of being in a PhD program. And if all of that totally turns you off, you might really want to reconsider why are you applying for a PhD in sociology? So, whew felt like a marathon so if you have any other questions about you know how I figured out what program I was going to go to what it's really like what the workload is like is there any of that kind of stuff please leave me a comment I'm really happy to help in any way that I can I wish that I had watched a video like this when I was applying myself so that's why I hope to help someone with this video thank you so much for watching remember the possibilities are endless imagine I'm gonna stick it out on